Hello, this is Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for autism spectrum disorder. So what exactly is ASD? Well, it includes several conditions that used to be diagnosed separately, including autistic disorder, pervasive developmental disorder, and Asperger syndrome. It includes difficulty with communication and interaction with other people, restricted interests and repetitive behaviors, and symptoms that hurt the person's ability to function properly in school, work, and other areas of life. How common is it? Well, the latest data shows that about 1 in 54 children are diagnosed with ASD. Because the criteria have changed over the years, and now it's a, a combination of diagnoses, it's very hard to compare the historical data with what we have now. It is four times more common in boys than girls. And it's reported in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. How is it diagnosed? It's not always easy. There's not like a specific lab test that is looked at for ASD. There's a wide range of symptoms. It's usually a two-step process, which includes a pediat pediatrician assessment and then a referral to uh, a team of specialists who can uh, make a, better, uh, a more definitive type of diagnosis. Uh, there's usually problems with two categories in order to make a, a diagnosis. Communication and social interaction is one. The other is restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior. And the workup may include genetic testing as well. There are many traditional treatments. There's not one standard treatment. There's no cure for uh, ASD, um, and the treatment regimen usually focuses on each child's specific needs, so it's tailored. It may include behavioral management, cognitive behavior therapy, education and school-based therapies, various medications, uh, nutritional regimen, OT and or uh, physical therapy, and then speech therapy as well. When you look at the medications for ASD, um, I don't want to give people the wrong impression. You know, it's not like you get prescribed an antidepressant because the child is, is depressed, right? It's an off-label type of prescription where the antidepressant may help with other aspects of, of the child's behavior. Um, so just keep that in mind. So various antidepressants, antipsychotics, stimulants, anti-anxiety medications, and then uh, there's a high association of seizures with ASD, so anticonvulsants may be helpful. All right, so when it comes to stem cell therapy for ASD, it really is changing the paradigm of how we're looking at treatment. We're attempting to repair uh, tissue damage, reduce inflammation, um, and treatments to date uh, have focused on the use of multipotent stem cells. And that's what we use at, at all of our centers in the U.S. and internationally, which include mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, we do not use embryonic stem cells at all. Um, I'll talk about those in a little bit as to why not. How do these stem cells work? Well, there's various mechanisms. It's not like the stem cells that we give are the ones that always turn into the child's own uh, cells. Uh, that's typically not the way it works. The stem cells are really, really good at reducing inflammation. They're also very good at modulating the immune system. They are excellent at promoting new blood vessel formation. And also, one of the key ways that they work is through cell-to-cell -cell communication. And this is called paracrine. So it needs to be noted right off the bat that stem cell therapy for autism is not a cure. And that goes for stem cell therapy for any condition. It's not going to cure anything. It can dramatically help um, autism and other conditions for a long period of time, um, years, but it's not going to be a cure. Uh, recent evidence suggests that immune dysregulation and neural inflammation play a role in what causes ASD. And incidentally, those are two of the major functions of stem cells are to modulate the immune system and reduce overall inflammation. Um, I don't see the need to go through this specific paragraph, but it mentions some of the specific growth factors and the lymphocytes that are modulated in order to uh, perform those functions. 
Um, I'm going to go through a few studies. I just pulled a few. There's so many showing how well that umbilical cord uh, stem cells work for um, autism. Uh, here's a paper out of uh, World Journal of Stem Cells. Uh, it talks about mesenchymal stem cells. You're, la you're uh, able to use them without genetic modification or pretreatment. <clears throat> you do not need to do ABO cross-matching uh, with a child or, or an adult. Uh, you don't need to do HLA matching like for a bone marrow transplant. Uh, that's not necessary. We do not see rejection. We don't see tumor growth. Um, it's been a very safe uh, treatment from that aspect. Several proof of concept clinical studies um, have shown the safety and effectiveness of MSC treatment in autistic patients. I do want to note uh, that, as I mentioned, we don't use embryonic stem cells. We don't use induced pluripotent stem cells. Those are just not ready for prime time. Even if there were no ethical issues um, at all, like embryonic stem cells typically come from aborted fetuses, uh, but even if you were to look past that, um, you can have problems with rejection and tumor formation, and you know we just don't use them for uh, those reasons and more. So if anyone suggests that you should undergo an embryonic stem cell treatment or an induced pluripotent, run away. So here's a table of some studies um, using either autologous stem cells or allogeneic. Allogeneic is what we use, which is the umbilical cord um, derived stem cells. Uh, there's lots of reasons we use those, but um, one of them is that they're very young, potent stem cells that are amazing, you know, at working on, on these types of conditions. Um, at Duke University years ago, they did a study looking at the safety of um, both autologous, you know, the child's own umbilical cord blood, as well as using it from a lab, which is the same type of labs we get ours from, and the results were very safe and, and very effective. Um, so you can see in these studies, um, if it looks, it says primary outcomes, they were all very safe and the outcomes were fantastic in behavior um, and cognitive and social abilities. Here's one looking at 25 kids a few years back um, and they used very high cell counts, 10 to 50 million cells per kilogram. Um, and they saw, first of all, it was very safe and significant improvements in behavior uh, sustained, you know, up of the year where the study followed these children. Here are two more studies um, that both concluded that proposed the combined use of mesenchymal stem cells and cord blood CD34 positive cells, uh, which is hematopoietic, for autism. Um, yeah, they came to the same result. So when you look at our autism treatment program, it is the same. Uh, at all of our international centers. Um, in Islamabad, we have a, a great location, gorgeous, um, with more coming soon in Karachi and Lahore. The process starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors. And when a family decides to move forward with the treatment, we will help with all the travel logistics, you know, to make it not so much of a, of a headache. And we'll pick patients up from the airport, take them to the clinic and back and to the hotel you know, make it as, as easy as possible. Um, the cells that we use come from FDA regulated labs in the United States. Um, we have performed over 15,000 procedures over eight, nine years with these biologics. Pristine safety record, never had, never had a serious adverse event. Um, we've had some very minor types of things like low grade fever, maybe some lightheadedness or dizziness. Um, for less than 24 hours. We do have uh, an anesthesiologist who can uh, sedate uh, the child with monitoring so that they can tolerate the IV. Um, and we do use cultured umbilical cord stem cells. Um, they are obtained from umbilical cord blood. Um, and as I mentioned, those have been very safe. You don't need to cross match um, any, any recipient. Uh, there's no rejection and the stem cells are really, really active. We have a very high viability, even with the cryopreservation of 90% viable. 
And these are very pure and potent stem cells that are cultured um, not through five generations, very, very low uh, culturing to maintain the activity. Now, there are two options. Um, one is to come three or four times over a period of a year, and the total for the year would be upwards of 200 million stem cells, um, you know, 30 to 40 to 50 million each time. Um, and the other is to come for five days. And every other day, the child will receive um, stem cell therapy for a total of um, 90 to 200 million. This, the cell totals are determined by the child weight. Our experience and all the studies that, that show the effectiveness um, basically decided on the stem cell totals by the child's weight. Um, so it's several million cells uh, per kilogram is what we uh, utilize. The process to get started is, is very simple. If you want to, you can go to the website, r3stemcell.com slash Pakistan. You can contact us through the website on live chat. You can fill out a contact form. You can give us a call on the USA prefix 001-888-988-0515. Um, our pricing is about three to four times less than the US or Panama or any of these countries that you know gouge uh, patients to the tune of 25 to $60,000. Um, that has never been our goal. Our goal is to provide first-rate treatments with very high-quality biologics at affordable pricing. Um, anyway, we look forward to hearing from you um, and helping uh, you and your family and, and, and children. So thank you very much for watching.